I, I was just with Mike and Cindy Jacobs two days ago, and I, I told her, I said, I, the Lord has given me a word for uh, what he's doing with the prophets this year, with, uh, with, uh, as he brings us together. See, because we've got to align ourselves. The prophetic works in several ways. It works individually. It works corporately. There is a corporate, always a corporate uh, uh, ecclesia of that prophetic or a corporate gathering of that prophetic group. And then it works territorially, but it also works generationally. And in Isaiah uh, 59, it says, when three generations, are prophesying what God has said together, arise, shine, your glory has come. So I don't think I don't think any one generation can ever pull off exactly what God is looking for in the earth. I think there has to be an alignment and a convergence of three generations. That's so powerful to con I mean he's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and uh, true generational wealth many times has to be three generations. And I mean, right now, even in the United States and cancel culture and media, it's trying to destroy the family unit. I mean, it's trying to disrupt, you know, uh, the definition of man and woman, biological, according to the Bible, the word of God. And so there's so much attack on identity and against the family. The thing that we find is we, we lose sight of why God put us here, why he took us from the earth and made us, then blew into us his spirit and brought life into us. And now that uh, through the Lord Jesus Christ, we always come back, bring our spirit back to him because he is the father of our spirits. And because of that, he put us here to watch and to multiply. And I believe the enemy can't stand the thought of us watching and multiplying and entering into the prosperity that God has for us. So that's very important. And yet I do know there's always a blending of generations that have to occur. And we see that all through the Word of God. We see that from one wineskin to another wineskin. We saw it from John the Baptist's wineskin. Only Philip and Andrew went with the Lord Jesus into the wineskin ahead. You're not going to always have a complete uh, crossing over of wineskins, but you do have to have some alignment that connects the last season with the next season. That's why Jesus went and got baptized. I mean, John even said, you know, you don't have to be baptized. You don't even fit this wineskin of repentance. And yet he said, unless I do this, I can't fulfill what I'm doing. And so I believe every time we align like this, there is some sort of fulfillment that is going on. Wow, that's so good. Every time we align like this, there's some sort of fulfillment. And I mean, I mean, it, it reminds me, sir, because, again, there's assignments and anointings released in every alignment. And and in a sense, we can't connect or converge with everybody at the same time you know we have to be we have to be cautious we have to be prayerful it has to be of god it has to be a divine appointment not of the flesh not witchcraft coerced forced but you know it's like where uh mary and elizabeth the baby in her spirit leapt and there was a connection at the sound of the voice so how important is it in midst of these shakings uh, i believe apostle that there's going to be more shakings, of course. The Bible says that. Jesus promises that uh, But in the Gospels. But in midst of this new era that we are in right now with more and more shakings and unknowns, more viruses, more bacteria, more lockdowns, shutdowns, all that's going to be coming and happening even more. But even in midst of that, how important is it for us to be aligned and stay connected and aligned to the true vine? I think we have to... Uh always represent the alignment that the Lord spoke to us from Ephesians chapter 4, because when he, he descended and then he ascended and went and he seated, while he was ascending, he gave gifts to mankind. 
and he gave us to be apostles and prophets and pastors and teachers and evangelists, healers. You find this over in 1 Corinthians 12, healers and miracle workers and administrators. And so without that alignment, we cannot represent his government in the earth realm. And uh, then I think every generation has their their alignment. And then when the three generations align together, all of a sudden you have a foundation that can't be shaken. And I think that's what the Lord's working on right now. Uh, I'm looking at uh, what this year is about. And I always go through the Word of God from start to finish. And this year, in the midst of this era, you mentioned an era. And I want, to, uh, I want you to lead us in talking about that. Uh, in this era, this is a war era that we are in these 10 years. Therefore, lots of conflict. Uh, but it's a war era because in this era that's called pay in Hebrew, that means the breath of God is blowing down from heaven. The voice of God is blowing down from heaven. The heavens are changing. I think a lot of people don't understand that. And in Psalms 102, the word of God says the heavens, you take off the heavens like an old garment. God is changing the heavenly realm during this time so that as he blows down through and into this first level of heaven down here, there's powers and principalities that are getting shaken. And then the structures of the cosmos down here that's built up with those that are aligned with those powers and principalities, they're getting shaken. And so we have to understand there's a whole lot of shaking going on right now, but it's going to be more. And then this year is the war for our divine recovery from, Mm. say, even the last 70 years. Now, I've been in this a long time, so I can go all the way back to the 60s and, and remember things that started happening then. And yet, we are in a divine recovery this year, but... In this recovery, there is a war. And the best way to think about it, all of you listening out there, it's like with Gideon. The enemy had been stealing from him, from the people, the Midianites had been stealing for seven years. And all of a sudden, God said, I'm going to come down and I'm going to choose people who can take a stand in this war and the stealing of my harvest is going to stop. Now, I think that happens this year, and I feel like you are called to be a harvester. I see it all over you, and I say you're going to rise up, and the stealing, you're going to also have incredible, shrewd strategy over how to stop the enemy from robbing the harvest, and then we're going to go forth. Of course, Gideon had to tear down his father's altar Mm -hmm. and then build a new altar. So I've written several books in the last couple of years. One of them is Rekindling Your Altar Fire. We're going to have to have a new fire on the altar to accomplish this. 